It is an insane time to be watching the markets. I'll tell you exactly what stocks I think you should be paying attention to. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. And well, if April showers bring May flowers, then what do May flowers bring? Pilgrims? We're going to get things cooking with SPY, QQQ, and IWM to cover some of the indices that I think are worth watching. And then we have Enphase. We also have Tesla, AMD, and NVIDIA with their charts, each very interesting and very much worth paying attention to. So we're going to talk about each of those. So here's SPY climbing that rising wedge, and we'll see right now in the pre-market hours, higher than what we closed at on Thursday of last week. And I hope that you enjoyed your Easter and your long weekend that you had. Uh, and so moving on from there, will we get back up to the top of this? If not, it is possible we come back down. We retest the support that we have down here on this rising wedge. We also have the 20 day, which is this beige line that's coming up down through here. We also have this historic support coming in at about 518. So we got a lot going on right now. So we'll see if we continue to climb. I have mentioned before, I am cautiously bullish on the markets. We could climb this for quite a while before we start tumbling down through the bottom of it. QQQ, you can see already exited its rising wedge pattern. As we saw, a little bit of softening with the big tech prices that are out there right now. And so far, we got to retest it. It's still outside of it. And the momentum, by the way, on SPY and QQQ, QQQ continues to fall. So we'll see if that momentum is something that over time allows us to break down through the 50 and have a little bit of a correction period in there. I think it happens sometime this quarter. We're going to have to watch and see for it. So moving over to IWM with the Russell 2000 stocks, which have been doing pretty well. If we look at the daily chart here, going back at the 19th of March, we were all the way down. If I look at the low price that we have here in the closing price, just shy of $200 per share is the low and closed at 202. We're now up at 210. So we're up about 5% from where we were from the 19th of March until we got to the 28th of March. So not too bad for an indices, for an index to move that 5% over several days. Now we are getting to the top of this rising wedge pattern for IWM. So we'll see if we start to sell down from there. We are in the pre-market hours up higher than we were at foreclose on Thursday. So moving over to end phase, we have an ascending triangle pattern taking place off the bottom of what we have for end phase going on right now. And the critical thing that you should be paying attention to is whether or not we get this golden cross moment. So if I actually take down the EMAs here for a moment, you can see, and let's take the Bollinger Bands down too. There we are. Nice and reduced here to this blue line, which is the 50-day simple moving average, the 200-day simple moving average. A golden cross would be this 50-day moving up over the 200-day. So we'll see if we get that sometime in the near future. Right now in the near term, this price action, you can see we got rejected. We almost pixel perfect touched onto the 200 day before selling back down. And now we're trying again. So if we come back and retest that 200, we could push higher above there. And well, you got to watch out for this double top that we had before that allowed us to sell off off of there. We want to stay above the 50, even if we do Fail to, re uh, fail to break resistance at the 200 day. Breaking up above that, getting a two candle close above that on the daily chart could be confirmation that we go higher from here. I have dollar cost average to position in end phase, which is currently up right now that my cost basis is down below where the price is at. And this is one that can really start paying off over time. So you can see the sort of sell that it has been on. Let me reset the view here so you can see the sort of sell that we've been on for a while that we have broken out of this downtrend that was right here, but being Below the 200 day is still a bearish thing. So we're still trading against the trend. Now look at the RSI that we have down here. Let me expand it for you. So you can really see it. We have just crossed up above the 50 on this one. And so that from a momentum standpoint is very good. We need to see, like I said, the break of that 200 day come into play for us. Now, if I bring the EMAs back up for a moment for end phase, what you'll see for that is that we have the green five day. Let me see if I can get you a better view here. We'll zoom in way in for this. There we go. Perfect. So we have this green five period exponential moving average crossing over the yellow, which is a 13 period. And we're getting close to crossing that 50 EMA as well, which is also near the 50 SMA. So if we get that cross yellow over red, that is one that is a, a pretty darn good bullish signal for us for end phase. We need to be watching for that. And then, like I said, that 200 day pushing up over that is the key thing, the important part that we want to pay attention to. We have all the signals right now that it is possibly time that we come in for some reversal coming in for end phase. We're going to have to be watching for that. Now, mind you, it is beaten down right now while the rest of the market is up. Being interest rate sensitive like it is, real estate being in the state that it's in right now, 
that I think that at some point in time, we're due for an upswing on this one, especially as those rate cuts come into play. I think that end phase is right in line to benefit from that. So this is one absolutely watching, taking dollar cost average position on this one. And I believe that it's going to outperform throughout the rest of 2024. We're going to have to watch and see again, keep your eyes on the 200 day. Tesla deliveries coming out tomorrow for what we have for Q1 of 2024. We have news coming out that they have recently increased the price of the Model Y by $1,000, which could be a good move by Tesla. If people think that they're going to get more expensive over time, they could try and buy them sooner, pulling forward some of the deliveries. So we gotta be paying attention to that as well. So let me actually take down some of this so we can see more of the price action that's taking place. So you can see we're down below the 50 day. That's a bearish thing that's happening right now. And then 175, it tends to be about where we see support. We also have one, uh, 165 coming off of that. And also down here, you can see buyers at 160 as well coming in. So we'll see if we continue on that. If I put the technicals that I have on here back up for you, pay attention to the white line coming down here that we're below. And then these two white lines here, this is a, a falling wedge, a descending wedge pattern that we have happening, which can signal a bullish reversal, but we do have to break out of the top of that. So let's tighten that line just a little bit right there. I think I like that better. And so we could possibly continue to fall on this one. It is possible we come back down and see that 166, 165. It is possible we find this point of confluence at right around 155, which mind you, going all the way back to what we're looking at here for around their earnings back in 2023, man, oh man, we had bottomed out right around 152-ish. So I think that that would be a critical buy point where we would, if we do sell off down to that level, I think that's one of those load zones that you'll find where we have an incredible rise back up, so a little bit of outperformance coming in uh, for Tesla during that time. So I think Tesla is one that should absolutely be watched as well, one that I continue to dollar cost average into as well, and that I do look for options opportunities uh, for calls and for puts on Tesla alike, to build my cash position and to continue to get dollar cost average into my favorite plays. Moving over to AMD, the important thing that we're looking at for AMD is what exactly happens with this 50 day that we have in here. Let me expand that a little bit for you. We'll stretch it out even more. And the, so the 50 SMA is this blue line coming up through here. You can see that we were able to peekaboo above it again and then close below it. That we're still getting that selling pressure on AMD. We still are above the EMA. We need to get that two candle close up above the SMA in order to have that continued bullish behavior for it. And so what are we looking at for the RSI? We're just down below 50, although we're inflecting upward towards it, we could possibly see that rise in momentum. In the pre-market hours, we're currently trading lower than what we closed. It's possible that we sell down from here. I think that if we do sell down, that it's a time to look for the value to come into AMD stock. We're gonna have to be watching for it. But if we are able to break up above that 50 day, SMA, get a solid close up above it. And then a second day, that RSA, like I said, is inflecting back around. That's going to be important for us because it is possible that we've seen the sell pressure already come in temporarily and that we do have that next rally coming in for AMD. And that's currently what I'm looking for. So I have a bullish bias on AMD in the short term here. Now, the big one, the big kahuna here is NVIDIA. And this one I got asked about today in the Discord by my friend uh, TurboTube is what it goes by. He's been in there for quite a while. Excellent guy. Glad that he's there. And I asked about AMD and what I see happening. I'm sorry for NVIDIA and what I see happening. Do I still believe the same thing that I've been talking about for a while now? And the answer is absolutely yes, that I still believe for NVIDIA that we could possibly have that four-figure price tag, that $1,000 mark coming in for NVIDIA stocks sometime throughout 2024. Now, is this the time? Well, you can see right here, the 20 period, which is this beige line right here, acted as incredible support for us, allowed to put in a new high. And then we also tested out here. However, we found support there, did not put in a new high over the previous one. So now are we consolidating or are we going to put in a lower low? That's the million dollar question that's happening right now. So it is possible that before we hit that thousand dollar price tag that we do sell off. If we're able to break down below the 20, we really want to be watching the 50 SMA and EMA here because I believe that that would be that next huge opportunity to catch that upside for NVIDIA uh, as it makes its march towards that $1,000 mark. Now, if support holds at about 900, it is possible to put in a new high. That's what we'd be looking for. For the upside of this, it's got to break these previous two highs that we have. A higher high is going to allow us to continue in the bullish direction for a little bit longer. Now, if we do happen to sell off instead, we got to be watching for a lower low. Are we going to break down below 850? If we break down below 850, we could have a double top here and it could be confirmed with a drop that takes us all the way down to about 800. 
Will we break down below 800? Well, that actually starts to bring in the 50s that I was talking about. So if we catch on to these 50s here, we have a lot of confluence that could be happening around the $800 mark, which would mean to catch that $1,000 price tag. That's a 25% upside. Should we sell down to that 800? So we could have something around 10% up from its current price, up to 25% up from its current price. If we see that $1,000 mark coming out of NVIDIA, and I think what we saw coming out of GTC with the B100s, that uh, we're able to easily pop out the H100s, H200s, pop those out, pop the B100 in. That could be a continued revenue driver for them and also fill out the bottom lines. And then the B200 chips that they have coming out as well. I think that there's going to be continued demand over time with NVIDIA still leading the infrastructure for the AI race that we have happening right now uh, throughout the entire world. So NVIDIA being at the heart of that, that $1,000, it, it might not happen this year, but I think that it happens Sometime we're going to have to be watching for that, but I still think that this year is when it's going to happen, whether it goes straight there from where we're at right now and gives us that 10 to 11% upside, or if it's one that sells off first, that it's going to kind of have its time to kind of settle, relax, restructure, rebuild, and then we'll see as it moves on from there. Like I said, do we catch that 25% upside? I would love to see NVIDIA at this point in time sell off, cool down for a little bit and really bring in those other buying opportunities because at this point right now, it's difficult to go ahead and, and purchase that. And to me, I would like to see a little bit of de-risking come in before uh, putting further investment into NVIDIA. Now, mind you, I think that you could here. I still think that it would be profitable from here, but I do think that should we sell off and let me put it up here one more time, the, the RSI as well, Right now, we're getting a little bit of bearish divergence there as well, that even though the prices continue just a little bit higher, we're still going a little bit lower uh, as far as the momentum goes. When we look at this one that we're starting to drop back down, you can see that through those RSI measures. So that little bit of divergence that we have, plus where the markets are at right now with QQQ, with, I, with uh, what we see in the S&P, with IWM, there's a lot of reason to believe that there could be a little bit of softness coming up. We've seen just an incredible rise, an incredible run for NVIDIA stock over the past several quarters. It's been absolutely astounding and insane going up almost 4x from the time that I started covering them when they were down in the uh, the lower 200s, around $230 per share. And that was, um, it's just, it's been incredible. I mean, for those of you who follow it, I'm sure that you know that, uh, but I do believe that NVIDIA still has that $1,000 price tag. I do believe that it happens sometime during 2024. I think the big question is, are we going to see continued softness in the near term, leading to an even bigger rally following that one, especially leading up to their earnings, which should take place sometime near the end of May. So we could see that softness come in now, and then that final run up leading up to their earnings, I think up to their earnings could bring in that $1,000 mark. So we're going to have to watch as we get closer to that. So right now it's April. April 1st, April Fool's Day, as a matter of fact, but there ain't no fool in, in this video right now that we could see that potential upside, like I said, maybe a little bit of softness now. Should we see that softness come in prior to the run-up to their earnings? I believe that we do get that run-up to their earnings, like we've seen the past several quarters taking place and then possibly selling off leading into their earnings as well. So uh, that's what I have for you guys in this video today. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'd absolutely love to hear from you. If you'd like to learn to do technical analysis like I do, there's a link for a course for technical analysis down in the description. Go ahead and click that. Sign up. There's hours upon hours worth of videos. Nice, clean, easy pieces to digest. And there's even a, a learning community that goes along with it where you can go and ask and get your questions answered. And you can really learn to benefit your portfolio through the power of technical analysis. And if you want to see my buys and sells, and you wanted to talk with me and my community members, you can do so using the link for the Patreon down in the description as well. Thanks guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. I am Dr. Stock, Doctor of Education. Remember my friends that learning is earning and we'll see you in the next video.